Hello, everyone. This is Yu Chen from Firebase, and I am an engineer working on the emulator suite. Today, I'm going to talk about how to get the Firebase emulator suite working in your continuous integration. Well, that's a mouthful. What it really means is using the tools provided by Firebase to help you test your app and make sure your app is always tested when you change something. So talking about changes, let's say you're working on an amazing app. Well, of course you are because you're using Firebase. Like when you change something to the app. Say one time after you change it, you deploy it to production and suddenly you figure out your app stops working. Yeah, that's stressful, but that kind of thing happened to everyone, including myself. But at Firebase, with the emulator suite, we got you. So what is the Firebase emulator suite? Well, it's a set of tools designed to help you spin up a local first, completely isolated environment for testing your apps. It's easy to see how it can really help during local development, but the emulator suite also lends itself well in continuous testing and integration. And I'm going to take you through the process of setting that up. So by the end of this video, you'll have something like this on GitHub Actions. Whenever you push any changes, as you can see here, it will always be tested against your comprehensive test suite. So if you look at here, we push a new commit and oh no, it looks like it broke the test. If you'd like to, you can drill into its logs and see what tests are exactly broken. So if anything could ever go wrong, you can catch it before you deploy it to the real users. And once you fix the issues, you can push again and GitHub Actions will run your test suite again. As you can probably tell from this green check mark, the test now passed. And now you can deploy with much, much better confidence. All right, let's take a look at the app we're working on today. As you can see, this is a typical e-commerce website where users can browse and add items to their shopping cart like this. Our app stores each user's shopping cart in their own document in Cloud Firestore for Firebase. And we use Firebase security rules to make sure nobody can change someone else's shopping cart. But what if when updating rules, we make a mistake and make it too restrictive so that users won't be able to even edit their own cart? You know what happens next. Soon we won't even have a business anymore. To make sure we absolutely get paid, I wrote some unit tests to get this important piece covered using the Firebase local emulator suite. Here's my project layout with my security rules here, functions here, and here's where I keep my tests. You can find all the code and tests on GitHub, and I'll show you the link at the end of this video. But let's take a look closer look at these tests for now. So here, the first test simulates a user creating their own shopping cart and make sure it succeeds. The second test makes sure if they try to modify someone else's card, it will fail. These tests run in the local isolated environment, in this case, the Firestore emulator. To learn more about how to write unit tests for your security rules, check out this video by Todd and Rachel at Firebase. So with these tests, we can make sure our security rules are well behaved but what about other pieces of our app? For example, our website also calculates the card total for each user using a cloud function. As you can see here, the cloud function is triggered when shopping cart items are updated in Firestore. It then calculates the total and finally writes the total back to a Firestore document. We definitely don't want this to go wrong either, since users put a lot of trust into their transactions with us. And that's why I've covered these kind of interactions between different pieces 
with integration tests. First, we add some items to a user's cart in the Firestore emulator, of course. This causes the function we just saw to trigger locally in the functions emulator. All emulators in the emulator suite work nicely with each other. As the function executes and writes back to Firestore, it only changes data in your Firestore emulator, not production. That's some nice isolation right there. So if we listen to the card document snapshot, we will also see that the card total has been updated by the cloud function. Once that happens, we can assert that the total is what we are expecting. And that proves our cloud function is also working correctly. With both unit tests and integration tests, the full story of a user adding items to their shopping cart is now complete. Let's say we made some changes to our app. For example, adding a new exciting feature. Let's first make sure our tests still pass locally. On the terminal, under your project directory, type in Firebase Emulators Exec NPM tests. This Emulators Exec command is like Emulators Start, which some of you may remember, but this command also sets the right environment variables so that your code using the admin SDK and rules unit testing SDK will automatically connect to the emulators with the right port numbers. In many cases, this means you can reuse your production code with no changes at all. Okay, let's rock and roll. It's spinning up the Firestore and Functions emulators right now and now it runs your test after the emulator suite is ready. And all tests pass. Nice. Finally, you'll notice that the command will automatically shut down the emulators for you. Hey, that's really reassuring to know all tests pass. However, it's really hard for me to remember to run this every time I change something. As my team grows larger, it is also a pain to test everyone's changes together. Here's when continuous integration, or CI, comes into the play. Continuous integration is the process of ensuring your tests run continuously. Whenever you open a pull request, push any new commits, and before you merge, your carefully planned tests need to run automatically. This ensures that you can catch any errors that get introduced as soon as possible. Not when you have a large number of changes that could be the culprit, but on every commit. We run CI ourselves here at Firebase, and I'd love to teach you how you can too. You can use any CI framework with the emulator suite, but I'm going to do a deep dive into GitHub Actions today. For those of you who prefer Travis CI or other environments, check out my blog post for the instructions. So let's start. Let's first start by creating a GitHub Actions configuration file so GitHub knows what to do with our repo. You do that by creating a .github folder under the repo root. Then create a subfolder named workflows. That is where we will put the workflow configuration file and let's name it firebase-ci.yaml. If you already have workflow files, feel free to create another file alongside your existing workflow files. All your workflow files will work in parallel. Let's start by telling GitHub when our workflow should run. We can go with a simple on push, which means running the workflow on every push to the repo. We can also run it when pull requests are created. 
Okay, now let's create a job for this workflow called emulator test. And we'll give it a memorizable name. We can then set the environment that it runs on. For a list of options for the environment and other configuration, please check out the GitHub Actions documentation. And now we're ready to create our steps for the job. So here are some basic steps to check out the repository, setting up Node.js, and installing Firebase CRI in the Node.js environment. Now onto our own project setup. We manage our dependencies using npm with this package.json file right here. So we want to install the dependencies using npm install. If you're not using Node.js, feel free to swap the step out with your own command. However, keep in mind that we need to tell GitHub to run npm install within the functions directory instead of the rules directory, because that's where we put our tests. You can do that by using the working directory option, specifying the relative path from the GitHub repository root to the project directory. You might find this useful if your tests are in the functions directory, or if you use the monorepo layout with multiple projects, just like what we have right now. Now, we're ready to run our tests. First of all, don't forget about the working directory option if you're running tests on a subdirectory. Now type in the command Firebase Emulators Exec NPM Test, which we explained a bit earlier. This command starts the emulator suite and then runs the command you specify and then shuts the emulators down. In our case, the command is npm test, but you can use your own test command if you're not using Node.js. Okay, now we have the configuration, it's time to save and push. You will notice that we are developing this on a branch called Firebase CI, so we can test things out without affecting the main branch and other pull requests that go in. Once we make sure it's working on our branch, then we can safely merge to the main branch. Let's see if our actions are running on GitHub. Go to GitHub, select the Actions tab, and refresh until GitHub kicks off the first action run. There we go! That's our commit message, and you can see the workflow name here. And you can also double check the workflow file config. Yep, that's exactly what we just wrote. We can monitor the progress by clicking on the task here, and it shows you the steps running. It's installing the CLI, installing dependencies, and running all the tests. Oh no, the test now fell. What did we do wrong? Let's dig a little bit more into the logs. Oh, it says error, no currently active project. Why does this happen? It's because Firebase CRI doesn't know which project ID it should use on GitHub. So if you're looking into our Firebase JSON, it only describes the services we are using, but it does not contain the project ID. The project ID is actually contained in the Firebase RC file, which specifies the default project ID example in our case. This file is usually ignored by the git ignore file which means it is not uploaded to GitHub and not included on the fresh checkup. That's why the Firebase CRI won't be able to know which project you need to run this on. And how do we fix that? Well, simple. We just need to edit the YAML file or more precisely, the final step. Add the dash dash project flag followed by our project ID. You can use any project ID here. It doesn't even have to be real, but keep in mind that this needs to match the project ID you're using in your tests. For example, our tests write fire show documents in the project ID example here. And remember earlier, we wrote the test that asserts our cloud function is triggered. In order for the cloud function to actually trigger, you need to specify the same project ID on the command line. Otherwise, some tests may time out or fail due to the functions not running. When in doubt, 
you can just use your real project ID everywhere to keep it consistent. Don't worry, it won't actually hit production. Now that we fixed the project ID, time to push again. So now if you go to the GitHub Actions page, you will see GitHub already picked up the new commit and it's running the test right now. All right, now you see all tests passed. Great. Yep, it's just like that. So if you push any commits to GitHub, it will run the actions on those commits. You can always see a history of all runs on this actions page as well. In this way, you know which commit broke the test, and then you can fix it with a follow-up commit and make sure everything is working again. Before we wrap up, note that we are only testing on a branch right now. Once you make sure the CI is working, you will definitely want to merge this to your main branch. After that, any pull request to your main branch will also be covered. That's pretty much it. Now you can build your app with much, much better confidence. To recap, here's what we did today. We talked about how we used the emulator suite to make sure our app is working correctly using unit tests and integration tests. We then showed you how you can use GitHub Actions to run continuous integration running these tests as soon as you change something. You can find our example app code, including all tests and GitHub workflow configuration here. I hope you're now ready to write some tests and get them running on CI. If you're watching this and saying to yourself, uh, I'm just getting started on my app, I'm already at a stage of integration testing, here's a bonus for you. Check out this video on how to use our shiny new emulator UI for iterating our app by my colleagues, David and Tyler. This is something you can use even from day one of app development. You can also use it for manual testing, giving you even more coverage and confidence. But either way, make sure to test often and test before you deploy. Remember, building apps is building user trust, and Firebase is always here to help. Catch you later.